Before we start off today's video, if you guys would like to join my Discord server, link will be in the description and it will also be in that pinned comment. Uh, if you'd like to join but it's been over 7 days since the video was published, make sure to use the latest video because the link only lasts for 7 days and then it expires apparently. So do use the latest video if you'd like to join. But anyway, let's get right into the video. What's up everyone? Good news! Good news! It's the new Dacia stroke Dacia Sandero. Like, comment, subscribe. That's right, James May has just told us what we're doing. And frankly, I need no introduction, so let's move on. Now, last week's video, I did do the Dacia slash Dacia Sandero, but I did do an older one, so if you'd like to check it out, then the video is literally right below it, because it's literally the previous video. But, I... It did a review and it was alright, it wasn't great, but at the end I gave a somewhat short review and then as an idea I thought that we would do the modern Sandero, so well, here we are. Uh, but anyway, that is it, let's get right into the video. So when it comes to the exterior, I somewhat like the exterior of the Sandero, definitely better than the previous one. The previous one, it does look similar to this one, or should I say swap that, but you know what, the grill is fine, it's got LED lights, you know, it's not ugly, I mean if you see anything cheap, you know what you expect, it doesn't cost that much. So this is, well, fine, I mean it's nothing special, but it's nothing bad. When it comes to the facelift, which is a lot of the Dacia's, if not all of them, you know, Sandero, the Stepway, the Logan, the Duster, I think. You know, they've got this new grill where they've got like D and a C shape or just double C's. I don't know what it is. And then that white things that go across, that is a definitely a cool design. It does add a more premium look to the car and to the brand itself. So definitely, that's my option but both do look good. When it comes to the side, well, you can kind of see, I kind of see a bit of Clio, but I also see a bit of the previous generation. It might just be me, but either way, it's not bad, it's inoffensive, there's nothing much to it, it's just a car, really. I mean, it does have more of a design compared to the last one though, so I will give it that. When it comes to the rear, the pre-facelift, well, it's... I don't know what to say, it's fine, it's inoffensive, and that's just about it. The facelift, however, it does have that year written out in that cool letters, the same as what's in the front, with the DC, CC, whatever it is, probably DC, because the D is, you know, the first letter, and it's the opposite of the C. Anyway, it definitely looks better for the car, much more premium, so definitely, definitely, this would be my choice, but both are good. When it comes to the interior, well, again, don't expect too much, but if you do get a decent trim level, then you do get some nice, well, things like air conditioning and an infotainment screen. I believe this is the stepway, but either way, I mean, this does have some two-tone interior thing with the orange as well. So I guess that's, you know, funky, you know, what? I'll take it. But either way, it's just simple and it's just laid out fine except for one thing, uh, the climate buttons are a bit too low, uh, I don't expect them to be you know all eye level, you know there's not enough space for that and also you know it's not a premium expensive car where all the fork goes in so you know what as bad as it is I'll you know I'll let it slide somewhat you know it's it's cheap it's fine it's just simple. When it comes to the performance well you got a 1 litre inline 3 cylinder. I say that, you actually got two of them. But one of them was also an LPG, so technically you got three. And because there's only three, we'll do them all and there's no diesels. So the entry level one, which you'd get with the ultimate basic of Sanderos, and maybe the, some other trim levels I can't remember, 
It's 66 horsepower and 70 pound feet of torque. It is front wheel drive and it does weigh more than a ton so it is quite a light car. It does come with a 5 speed manual gearbox, 0 to 60 is 16.2 seconds, wow super fast, and top speed is 98 miles an hour, wow Bugatti Veyron isn't it? Um, but on a serious note, if you're just doing town driving like you're my grandparents then this is frankly fine, but if you do a lot of motorway driving or even dual carriageway driving, this isn't for you. And if you're old and you're doing town driving, unfortunately there's no automatic for you. That's the next engine, that's the more powerful engine unfortunately, if you don't want the more powerful engine. Unfortunately, but the more powerful engine has a turbo and 89 horsepower, 1 litre 3 cylinders again usual, 118 pound feet of torque and it is front wheel drive. It does weigh 1050 kilograms and onwards and it either comes with a 5 or 6 speed manual gearbox. This is the thing, the Dacia website says 5 but websites also say 5 and some say 6. So it's like, what? So it's either one, I'm not sure. And if you want the automatic it is a CVT which if you do motorway driving and dual carriageway driving then when you put your foot down it will be loud you know the engine will sit near the red line now if you're a car person like me then this obviously isn't good but if you're just a normal person who goes from A to B you frankly could not care less but to me I do care because I like cars but anyway 0 to 60 is 11.3 seconds for the manual and 13 for the CVT 111 miles an hour is the top speed for the manual and 105 for the CVT. Now the LPG one, it had 10 more horsepower at 98 and a bit more torque at 125 and of course front wheel drive. It did weigh more than 1100 kilograms and again same thing with the gearbox, I really don't know. Uh, so it's either one of them, you know, can't be further wrong than this. 0 to 60 is 11.2 seconds and the top speed is 114 miles an hour. So when it comes to the practicality, well, good news. The boot is 328 litres big and that is, well, that is very good for this kind of car, this size. So, well, there you are. And you also get 78 litres under the boot floor, which is, well, great. It's like that Puma. ST that I reviewed, one of the first reviews or early reviews, that also had underfloor storage. Now I believe on some versions or options there was a spare wheel, uh, If I don't remember if you lost that 78 litres you might have done, but if you had that spare wheel then well you may have lost it I'm not sure. Uh, if you got the LPG then that spare tyre would be removed because that's where the LPG tank would have gone. So yeah. And then the rear legroom, well, that was plentiful, and the headroom was also plentiful. This was definitely a very practical small hatchback, definitely very good. Six footers, they should be fine, definitely for the shorter journeys, not maybe, like some other cars, definitely, and even possibly the longer journeys, because, well, for this kind of car it is great, and obviously kids will be fine as well. When it comes to the handling, well, as you expect, you don't expect this car to, you know, handle like a Ferrari. No, this is a cheap, reasonable hatchback. However, it does have plenty of grip through the corners. So that obviously does aid in its handling and it gives you and the car some confidence together. You know, it's not going to slip about, you know, it's not just lousy. I mean, it is kind of lousy, but, you know, it is on the cheaper side. But either way, you know, there may have been no frills. But there was no downsides, I guess you can put. And also, not only was it unfortunately not that exciting. I say unfortunately, I don't expect it to be. It's not really a con for this kind of car. But it was really comfortable. So that obviously is going to be good for the family. Uh, they're going to like that. And well, this car should be soft for the family anyway. You know, it's a family hatchback. When it comes to anything else, what is worth noting? Well... As we know it is based on a modern Clio, I hope this is the modern Clio, I think it is but they looks very similar. But anyway it is based on a modern Clio if that's not the modern Clio image. Uh, the basic model does look like this, so it only comes in white, uh, you've got steel wheels, 
uh, bumpers are black, uh, mirrors are black, door handles are black. Uh, I don't believe there's any air con no, there won't be any air conditioning on this. Uh, infotainment screen, well, that wasn't a thing. Uh, it was just basic. I believe it costed £7,000. The previous generation was £6,000, I believe. But this came with the 1 litre naturally aspirated engine. But when the facelifted came, this version of the Sandero, the basic one, and that engine were completely dropped. And thank God, because they're well, that engine anyway, it was terrible. Well, for me anyway, you know, I wouldn't like it. But, you know, it was so it was so slow. And this, well, if you wanted to just literally go to the shops and you wanted a cheap car to buy or to do PCP on a new car or a slightly used car, then you probably would have gone for this. And also when it comes to Euro NCAP, I know this is the step way, but there are no decent images for, um, just the standard Sandero having a crash, yeah. But anyway, it scored two stars, so I mean, I don't expect it to get five, but I think at least three would have done. Uh, but so just be wary of you know the safety rating of this, and pretty much every review talks about how it scored in your end cap. So you can't blame me for ruining your mood. Well, what is the verdict anyway? So it has a big boot space, it has underfloor storage, which is actually a good amount, good rear legroom, good rear headroom, perfect for just going for A to B, literally. It is simple everywhere. It has a nice ride, decent grip, and it has decent exterior looks. The cons, however, are the 65 horsepower engine will struggle at the highest speeds, and it will. You know, it's got no oomph to it. The basic model is just, well, basic? Nothing to it, it's just for going to A to B. Uh, the CVT will whine under hard acceleration. For car people, that means something. For non-car people, it's just an automatic at this point. The temp controls are somewhat low and the safety rating is, well, I want to say abysmal, but, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a brilliant expensive car with a crap safety rating. Uh, so it's, it's mediocre really. But anyway, if you would like to check out my reaction channel Directions Write as many words with the same pattern U-C-K Truck Buck Tuck F-word <laughs> At least it didn't actually spell out Frankie I earn money at home by I don't I'm a freeloader <laughs> 2 plus 2 equals 4 I can do math <laughs> Then I will leave a link to that in the description below. Still on a break, I'm not sure how long I'll be on a break for, possibly forever, I don't know at this point. Uh, normally, you know, blow a car, you guess in the comments, blah 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 blah. Recently, I'm, I've been slacking, I don't know what car to do. It's ridiculous. So obviously a car will come. But if you would like me to review a car, then you can also leave it in the comments below. But anyway, I'll see you guys in next week's video, and don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.